Okay, good afternoon everyone, and uh, thank you very much for joining us at our panel, Meet the OpenStack Ambassadors. We're very fortunate uh, to have time from our ambassadors today. They're uh, quite busy people. So, uh, my name's Tom Fifield. I'm from the OpenStack Foundation, and uh, we're here to talk about uh, the ambassador program, which uh, aimed to create a framework of community leaders around the world to, to kind of uh, glue everything together. Because OpenStack has more than 75 user groups around the world in, in more than 50 different countries. And each of them are very different. People from different cultures, different company backgrounds, different technical backgrounds. And so we created the OpenStack Ambassador Program to try and get some of our best practice leaders together. And uh, here's one of our best practice leaders arriving slightly late. <laughs> Uh, to kind of pave the way for, for everything that's uh, been going on. And so you can see on this wiki page here some of the roles of the ambassador programs, basically acting as a liaison between all of the user groups in the world and the foundation. So information gets down to the user groups, and we can collate all of that feedback from all of those people who hang around in the user groups back up to the top level. They help find the right people to talk to. Everyone here kind of knows everyone in the community. So if you see one of these guys around the conference, buy them a beer or just be annoying and, and ask them lots of questions because they know more than they will tell you. We want coffee, not beer. Exactly, coffee. exactly. But uh, without further ado, I'd uh, love to introduce to you the OpenStack ambassadors. And uh, if possible, please, can you just uh, say your name and uh, where you're from? Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Akira Yoshiyama uh, from Japan. Uh, nice to meet you. Hello, everyone. My name is Marcelo, Marcelo Jeder, and I am from Brazil. Uh, my name is Ken Hoy, and I'm from the U.S., uh, Northeast. G'day, I'm Tristan, and I'm from Australia. Hello, my name is Marton Kisch, and I'm from Hungary. Hi, my name is uh, Erwin Galen, uh, I'm from France. Hey, name. hey, my name's Michael Still, and I'm from Australia as well. Sean Roberts, I am from California, uh, Western United States. Uh, Kavit Munshi, I'm from India. And you could see that we've got basically the entire world covered. Uh, we've got time zone coverage. If you have a problem at any time of the day or night, you can uh, get in touch with one of these guys. And so just to, uh, just to kick off uh, the panel, I'd, I'd like to throw a question to the ambassadors. Um, since you're all from different regions, what, what's special about your region? What are the challenges you face? What challenges do people face using OpenStack? That's a that's a difficult one to, to begin <laughs> with. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Don't um, just give one word answers like neutron. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, um, well, uh, Australia obviously coming to summits, we have to come a long way. Um, so <laughs> that's probably a difficult thing. Um, Michael, what what do you have any other thoughts on particular difficulties in Australia? I think different markets are at different stages of adoption. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know about other markets. I see a lot of people in Australia doing proof of concept relatively small uh, deploys. And that doesn't particularly surprise me because I feel like our marketplace lags, say, the US by you know a couple of years with most things. Yeah, fair comment. Mm -hmm. I think we also feel the pressure of a growing economy, right? So there's, there's a lot of competing technologies out there that compete for talent. It's very difficult to find talent on the ground that, that basically knows what to do, right? And, and that to drive that growth, we have to go to universities that are outside the main metropolitan cities and try and interest students to basically learn about the cloud, learn about what, what's go what are going to be the emerging technologies. That's been a very big challenge for us. So uh, for Brazil, it's very difficult the uh, barriers language because the, the people don't speak uh, much uh, English and uh, other countries around uh, the South America. And uh, it's very hard also to find speakers, speakers about cloud, about uh, OpenStack. Yeah, I think is the, the most uh, difficult for us. Uh, 
Yeah, for us uh, in France, we, we have uh, lots of uh, OpenStack developers, so for Meetup, I it's quite easy. And uh, for, for the market, yeah, um, lots of companies uh, are uh, still in a POC status, but we have uh, uh, in the telco a uh, few, few production uh, deployments, so quite active uh, group uh, in France. In, ha in Hungary, and it is true for entire Eastern Europe, that uh, the people usually don't like to learn very new things because they have used to do something and they want to do the same, but, uh, but uh, maybe to teach this DevOps culture and how to use cloud and teach them about cloud, it is very hard. And the other thing I see as a problem that uh, we don't have a culture of traveling to conferences. For example, it, it works very well in the States, but in Central Europe, maybe moving from Sofia to Budapest for a conference, it is not a so common thing. And moving out to a different city. But anyway, we don't have so huge distances, so technically it cannot be a problem. Indeed, so it sounds like there's many issues around the world. And so in, in your role as an ambassador, what are, you, what are you doing to solve some of these issues? How are you helping people to you know, uh, well, how are you helping to promote and t uh, protect and empower the OpenStack community and uh, ensure that in every region we have a high quality OpenStack experience? I think we started with uh, one city, Bangalore in India, and we've made it a conscious effort. We are in 10 to 11 cities now. Uh, we, are, we try and go to cities and we approach universities or software companies to give us a venue. We try and do a basic what is OpenStack, what is cloud, kind of a session. And we also try and show the docs. We also also try and show a demo. And we try and go outside the cities where the infrastructure is very good. And people would find out about OpenStack anyway. And we try and go out to rural areas where it is not as popular or there are not many resources. And we try and foster adoption. We also try and organize, uh, we, we are in the process of organizing a mentorship program where we try and nominate people from several vendors and try and get them to either go to a university or talk to students or talk to just a general community about a particular project and help out anyone who wants to get into development or ops, stuff like that. So that's, that's been the focal point so far. Uh, I think in, in Brazil, uh, I am a, one of founder uh, user Brazil group, so it's very hard to to do uh, the user group in uh, a country as Brazil because it's the biggest country. Uh, so I finding I, I help finding people to uh, organize the local events in Brazil in other locations, the South Brazil, North of Brazil, and uh, uh, I think is the the find the people can help in uh, uh, to disseminate the open stack is the, the better road. So in Australia, we've had an OpenStack um, day at like at our biggest open source tech conference for the last couple of years. And I think one of the things well, I needed to do was listen to people about what they were getting out of that. It was actually really interesting. System admins weren't going because they thought it was a, a day for op people developing OpenStack. So... You know, we were totally hitting the wrong market, if that makes sense. And so we're kind of pivoting. We're going to rebrand it. We're going to make it clearer that it's about deploying OpenStack and what OpenStack can do for, you know, operators and system admins and app developers. And so we'll see if that helps. And maybe we'll come back with some data about rebranding. Indeed. And I, I'd like to... Uh, oh, Sean, did you have something uh, to I was going to say we had the opposite problem because uh, there are so many companies actually commercially working on OpenStack in the area I live in. Uh, most of those guys don't have the time to go do something extra at this point. They did in the beginning. That's how the user, the user group in that area got started as a hackathon. So now we have the opposite problem. The people showing up are real beginners usually from uh, you know, Python experienced, uh, OpenStack inexperienced to real beginners all the way. So um, that's why we started training people because they, you know, they didn't have any experience. So. Uh, in Japan, uh, uh, we uh, Japanese OpenStack user group uh, had had joined uh, many uh, local uh, op open source event, uh, and uh, 
we had uh, 19 um, study up, uh, study meetup. So uh, we have to uh, we have to continue uh, the uh, activity. Uh, um, in e Eastern Europe, I'm trying to find the proper uh, leaders who can start maybe a new user group in, in different countries. And I guess what we did good in, in Hungary that we built up a lot of marketing and promotion channels. And I tried to support those people to, to clone the same story and, and reach uh, different audiences of the industry. For example, now, we are reaching the enterprises, the startups, and, and financial and telecommunication sector. So almost everybody. And uh, I think we need to clone this uh, model into the different different countries. And what we did, we started to organize uh, also a one-day conference in Budapest. We, we did two in the last two years. And it is a good... Um, um, good chance for everybody in the region to gather into one place and, and talk about the common problems or, or to deploy OpenStack and, and learn from each other. Indeed. And I think that's uh, a good point to jump into something a little bit different. I'm not sure if the audience on entering this room realized that this was an interactive session. Because uh, one of the, yes, we should <laughs> lock the door. You're all, you're all stuck here. And uh, we actually, uh, in preparation for this meeting, uh, one of the things that we decided on is that we actually wanted to spend quite a lot of our time actually listening to what people in the room wanted the ambassadors to be doing, or what you need in terms of OpenStack. So we actually have three microphones there. I'd really appreciate if anyone could get up to one of those microphones and give a demand or ask a question. I have seen the etherpad. So while someone's going to the microphone, I'll just answer one of the questions there quickly. The OpenStack ambassadors are volunteers, entirely volunteers. They're doing all of this amazing work by themselves. So your question. Yeah, and this question I'm uh, throwing at Sean, possibly, because I had a uh, discussion with him. He said that uh, because summit is not possible for every country to organize, it's quite possible for to uh, get some kind of a service provider uh, uh, kind of a summit, OpenStack summit, or OpenStack meetup, or something like that, if I recollect. Uh, would you like to comment on that? Like you said, February, we might look at India for some kind of a service provider meet or something, if I recollect. Uh, not uh, virtual, not virtual. This is physical only. OK. Uh, I know we talked something about this, but I, I guess I lost a little bit of the flavor of it. Maybe I wasn't completely conscious earlier in the week. Um, so explain to me a little bit more about, I guess I'm going to have to give the microphone back to you, but um, what exactly you mean? Because uh, you're saying service provider OpenStack. You're talking about specifically around. See, OK, we evaluated the possibility of uh, Summit being in India. And then we came up I remember that two part. or three, four times I have presented. What I find is you need 4,000, 5,000 people to be, uh, uh, what a, you need a facility which is 4,000 to 5,000. Then uh, the second is you need to have some visas and you should have one time flight because most of the folks come from say, California, uh, 2,500 or 2,000 developers come from there. So running a developer conference, develop, so you said that this is too big a huge uh, effort. Why don't we come down to just say service provider meet? Uh, let's say service providers in India, like there are service providers, like Little Alliance, um, Idea, and there are, there are many providers. So for that, can we have a smaller summit so that it doesn't consume so much of uh, effort? And since we are moving towards NFE, that might be a good idea. That's what you mentioned, if I remember correctly. We're, we're arguing over who's going to answer now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So this is interesting to me because I think we have the same problem in Australia, right? I would love for this event to go to Australia, but I can't see it happening, mostly because of travel time and costs for uh, US people, right? Um, so what we've done is we identified a local tech conference that was willing to incubate smaller conferences, 
and we run this day-long thing that I mentioned before as part of that event. Uh, so they call them mini comps. And that's worked well for us because somebody else does most of the logistical work and what we do is provide content, you know, speakers and marketing and stuff like that. So I guess my advice would be try and identify what, you know, tech event is successful in your region or segment of the market or whatever it is and see if they're interested in running an OpenStack day. There are other examples of this. The Pocona people in Santa Clara and California have an OpenStack day now too. Um, because frankly, running a conference by yourself, I did that once for only 800 people. It took two years of my life. It's a massive amount of work. So like leveraging somebody else's event is probably wise. How, how many user groups are there in India? Is just it one? one? Just the one, just okay. Just the one, but we have a lot of, we have a lot of local branches uh, yeah, and yeah. each yeah. branch is autonomous. So we have a committee, uh, okay. we, we work democratically, right? So yeah. we have around 10 cities now. Each has a local representative. Yeah. And then all of us, we get together and decide what to do, what direction to take forward. Right. Uh, speaking about that problem, we already kind of have been doing an OpenSec India Day for the last three years. Next year is being planned in either Feb or March 2015. So we welcome any service providers that A, want to sponsor us. Uh, give us some money. I, I don't know. It's it's difficult. It's getting increasingly difficult to do, and a completely n completely uh, kind kind of a benign kind of an event like with no one sponsoring us, because we are getting to 600, 700 people now, and just to provide food and the whole a venue for the whole day, so we need people to sponsor us as well. In the past, a lot of vendors have sponsored us, but we kind of need to kick it up a notch and do it on a bigger scale because. Just hiring a hotel room isn't cutting it anymore, right? So, so we need we need we need to grow that, and that's why we kind of postponed it from December to March. So it would give us three or four months extra to try and galvanize some support. So it is happening, uh, and if service providers want to join us, that would be excellent. Thank you. I, I'd add um, onto that that there's already. I mean, that's how OpenStack started. It started at OzCon. Um, and there's continued to be um, uh, Atlantic's con, um, which is it's called Cloud Open, but it's primarily OpenStack stuff. So that's that stuff's already happening. So I say that's copy that because that makes a lot of sense. So keep it keep it going. Indeed, uh, and uh, we're seeing these kind of events spring up around the world. So uh, Yoshiyama-san can talk about uh, the OpenStack Tokyo Day, which uh, gathered. 1,300 people. There was uh, one awesome. in Taiwan that did 1,000 earlier this year, Silicon Valley, all, all of these kind of things. So uh, just to grab another random question off the etherpad. First, how many of you speak uh, or can use a language other than English? I can kind of speak German. <laughs> I, I think you speak yeah. Japanese, right, yoshiyama <laughs> yeah. yeah, OK, great. <laughs> Yes, I know English is difficult. And so one simple question that's cropped up on our etherpad uh, is, should we translate documentation? Does anyone want to go at answering that? Yes, the docs team should do that. <laughs> <laughs> typey, typey. <laughs> Unfortunately, my Chinese is not that good yet. but. Uh, I think uh, we are trying to improve where to translate the documentation and translate the user interfaces OpenStack in different languages. Maybe last time we tried to do something with Serbian and, and the Czech. Um, I think it will work uh, right in the for the next uh, release. But uh, usually, I guess, uh, most of the system administrators and the users of OpenStack can speak English or understand the English, so it is not so mandatory in this uh, Central European region, I guess, because it requires a lot of resources and a lot of efforts to to continuously translate everything. So I, I think the question to start with, though, is not should we translate. I think the question is, are there regions in the world where not having documentation in the native language is holding OpenStack mm -hmm. adoption back? You know what I mean? This, I think that I think that's the first thing we got to answer. Um, yeah. and obviously, folks from other places could answer that better than I can. I think uh, we we ha we have to translate. Um, most of technical guys, uh, developers, they don't like translation. They said uh, English is enough. But uh, for newbies, people who want to discover pro the project, or people in company um, who work most of the time with enterprise product, 
they work. We've translated the, you, you can find some translated documentations. So I think we have to do it. And the ambassador uh, could help for this. In France, we have a, uh, uh, an active uh, group uh, for French translation with uh, Quebec. And uh, I, I, I we, we support this, uh, this, uh, this work. So I'd like to add that we were colonized by the English for like 200 years. Everyone speaks English, I guess. Uh, also, all the higher education is in English. Like if you want to do university, you can do it in a non-English language, but all technical study, engineering, comp sci, they're all the programs are delivered in English. So I guess we do need some local language translation, but so far we haven't really received those many requests from the actual user group. I will make it a point to raise it in the next meeting and see if I get any traction with it. Thanks. I guess I'm going to add that. Um, so we started at, uh, doing uh, writing our stuff down because we were training people a lot because the, the, the type of people that were showing up and we wanted to help them and um, we wanted to try to make it as consistent as possible. So fast forward to today, um, there's um, a couple people from uh, Indonesia that really want and have actually used the material we put together and put, toge uh, put together their own version because um, partially to translate, but partially they felt the way that we were saying it didn't translate way f uh, way right to the way that the Indonesian people thought and looked at this. So um, it may be there needs to be some different copies of stuff just because of ways people are used to it learning in different areas. So. I, I think uh, also is is very difficult. Uh, the translation is up to date with the 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 official documentation. Uh, there are a lack of of time, and uh, with the documentation, uh, official documentation and the document translation documentation. So for us, it's better use the English version uh, than the the Portuguese version. Yeah, because we just now got the docs team. Well, I shouldn't say just now, but the docs team is to the point where it's sophisticated enough that they just cut stable uh, the kilo documentation a couple days ago. And that's pretty awesome that they're they have so many people now, but to then reproduce that for other languages it seems pretty big hill to climb. So I think we've uh, comprehensive. Oh, Yoshiyama-san, did you want to say something? Yes, uh, in Japan. Uh, most Japanese uh, need uh, Japanese document because uh, most Japanese uh, can't <laughs> can't read uh, English document. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, our uh, user group uh, uh, sta started to translate the documentation and. Uh, had uh, a Japanese uh, website uh, for uh, for OpenStack, and uh, our community uh, is very act uh, very active to uh, translate uh, OpenStack documentation, and uh, so uh, we have uh, Japanese uh, uh, journal release. Uh, release note and uh, and other uh, so uh, our original uh, OpenStack documentation. So just one last thing, like we have vendors who ship in other countries, right? Maybe they have translation resources we could be using, and the foundation also has money. So I wonder, like, you know, if say the Japanese user group can get it ninety percent of the way, maybe we can find a way for the foundation or vendors that sell in Japan to help with the ongoing, every time a patch is made, we need to push it across to the other language. Indeed. So that's an example of a suggestion that the ambassador group might make to the foundation. And as Michael said, the foundation does have money. And these guys are amongst the people that we trust to suggest things that we should be spending money on. So. I'd like to uh, see if I can get someone else to perform the very scary task of standing behind a microphone. Uh, and I'm looking for something that's more of a request rather than a question. Is there something that the ambassador should be doing for you that they're not right now? OK, I have a question. I'm from Romania, and we're also trying to start up OpenStack meetups and user groups. 
Uh, my curiosity is, is the foundation open in uh, sponsoring or helping out in organizing these types of user groups in the likes of, I don't know, maybe bringing foreign speakers or stuff like that? You can answer that, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Can you fly people over? In, indeed. I talk after this su session, no. right? <laughs> I, I can, we can find some way to start your user group and uh, I can, I try to give a lot of support to you exactly. because it is my old goal to start something really in Romania back because uh, there was some, some initial user groups in, in Bucharest as I know, but it is not regular. Cool, so the first step would be to chat with uh, your ambassador in Europe. It sounds like uh, Martin might have some ideas already on some people who might be a little bit closer than, than America, for example. So maybe you guys should uh, catch up to after that, and that's exactly the kind of thing that we want to see happening with the program. Yes? I, I was going to oh. add, sorry, add some, no, don't go away. Um, <laughs> so uh, I... <laughs> I don't think that we actually advertise our names anywhere, right? Like, not like on the user group page or anything like that. They're Maybe that's something we need to change. They're on openstack.org slash community. Are they? Yes, they are. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. And we, can, we can put some blink tags and, uh, yes. you know, some animated yeah. GIFs. Yeah. yeah. I want and dancing mm, figures for uh, Ryan. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Just to finish about this question, um, we can help. We I, I've seen a question about Hub with... Uh, Local, uh, local sponsor. Yeah, we, we know lots of people, lots of company, and uh, I know in the east of Europe, big company can 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 help uh, in a, in all countries. So uh, we can discuss about this, and you can have support if you for specific uh, meetups uh, to find some sponsor uh, to 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 help you. Indeed. So our poor audience member has been standing up and down and. <laughs> One quick question, um, how many ambassadors are there per country? Is this the set universe of ambassadors or are there more than this set and then are there more per country? I noticed there were two, two Australians, two Americans. You know, I was just getting Indeed. So there's, there's currently 13 ambassadors okay. with a broad geographical area. Uh, they're not the same as user group leaders. I don't know if you guys want to take that as a question, how do you interact with the user group leaders, where do the ambassadors fit? Is that uh, helpful to answer? Well, I think b my follow-on is more in terms of um, we have some women, we have a women's group, and I was wondering if there was an opportunity to recruit some women ambassadors as well, and if that could be, you know, we can broaden it, or if is it one, is it one ambassador per country, or that kind of thing. I just thought that might be an interesting request or alignment to take back to the women's group to look at broadening sure. the participation participation of women with OpenStack. Absolutely. It's uh, very unfortunate that what when we were finding the first tranche of ambassadors, we didn't have a single woman apply, and uh, we did try. No, I'm sure you yeah. did. I, I was just wondering if there's an opportunity to expand it or... Because it sounds, it seems to me, just in the last couple of open sex summits, uh, that there's just been a lot more inertia there. So. Absolutely, uh, okay. this program's in its infancy, so yes. Okay, <laughs> great. Cool, thanks. Uh, but there I think there was a question there about how you tie in with user groups. Well, I run a user group in San Francisco, um, so. I don't think it necessarily has to be a one-to-one, -one, but I, I interact with um, a few of the people here on a consistent basis. Um, we don't necessarily always talk specifically about the user groups. We usually talk about community-related stuff. So, um, yeah, that's all I have. <laughs> so, uh, so the model, I kind of the model I've been doing to help. So I'm actually helping out three or four groups right now, and the way I do that is uh, I have a model where each uh, let's use those groups have a local set of organizers that does logistics and facilities and get sponsored, you know, uh, for for their events. And my job, because I have uh, I happen to know a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of vendors in the ecosystem, my job is basically to provide speakers. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of us probably can do. We we know people in the ecosystem, so if you're looking for speakers, we can try to get them to you. Uh, one request I have. Uh, one request, Tom, <laughs> is um, 
I, I know a lot of the uh, a lot of the user groups that, uh, outside the U.S. have problems finding speakers. I think I've heard that multiple times now. I wonder if there's a way um, if we can get people who are willing to uh, can and willing to be speakers to almost kind of publish their schedule um, of where they may be traveling, uh, particularly since a lot of the speakers tend to come out of the U.S. in probably Amir or whatever. So, so a good example is you know I was in uh, London last week. Two weeks ago, uh, I'm going to be in, in Sydney, Australia, <laughs> you know, next month. So there was a way for me to let people know that, and then people can go, oh, you know, we, we're, we're actually going to have a user group. Would you like to come and speak? I'm, I'm sure, because I think one of the, one of the um, challenges of having uh, speakers fly to another country is who's going to pay for it. Uh, so in this case, if I know I'm going to be traveling different parts of the world ahead of time, uh, and I tend to, then basically my, my company basically pays for that so so I, th I think having speakers physically at the event is good and sh we should do it as much as we can but we have had some success with you know, for instance john dickinson did a swift presentation over skype or whatever so there's also kind of other options available if we know that people need content but that requires the user groups to actually come and talk to us we can publish that somewhere here's some you know options for if that is in fact an issue, right, for people to have uh, content and speakers, maybe you should publish that somewhere for different options and then say, here's the ambassador in your area you can talk to that can help facilitate. I like that yeah. a lot. There's a small drawback around privacy. So, but if we could figure that out, I, I like that idea a lot. Because um, I, I actually did, uh, over the last couple of years, did travel to a couple of different user groups. I knew I was going to be in the area and I specifically contacted them and said, hey, are you interested in doing X, Y, or Z? And it was pretty successful. Bless you. Um, and then, <laughs> uh, so uh, if we could do more of that, and I go to enough of these events that people, uh, I guess it's a little bit easier for me right now because people tend to seek me out more than I have to seek them out. So that's that's a good problem to have, I guess. But um, there's no reason why we can't seek them out and say, I'm going to be here. Do you guys, what do, what do you guys need? Indeed, well, our gentleman in the audience has been standing by the microphone for a few minutes. Apologies for the delay. Being a lot as well, so I don't mind standing every now and again. Um, so in terms of uh, causes, uh, I actually have a request. It's something I've already um, raised with the foundation um, personally is um, if, uh, so one of the things about uh, uh, OpenStack adoption in, in the greater level is uh, a lot of things of, of tool support. So there's a lot of other tools outside of the uh, Stackforge or wherever they are. There's a particular company, probably some of you are familiar with, uh, HashiCorp, that produce tools like Vagrant and Packer, um, which are, I would say, best practice kind of developers tools in their toolbox. But there is no formal um, association between the OpenStack Foundation and HashiCorp. And as a result of that, the integration support between those different various tools is lacking, is compared to, if you compare it to something like the integration with Amazon. Um, and I see this as kind of an issue, it's a personal issue for me, because these are things that I work with, with various customers, and I am trying to help uh, encourage the foundation to have that relationship with HashiCorp so we can improve some of these integrations. That's interesting, right? My employer has a developer relations group, and one of the things they do is they go and try and find things like cloud libraries and make sure they have uh, good OpenStack support. So I think you know, Vagrant, for instance, would make, kind of falls into that class of problem, right? But it's hard for that group to identify what tools are lacking, you know, you have support that is like maybe it exists a little bit, but it ain't great kind of thing, because they don't use all of the tools. So if there are requests like that, I feel like you know, posting to OpenStack Dev would be a reasonable thing to do. So Philip's um, already done that. So I saw that there was a vagrant thread, but I thought that was from an employee of HashiCorp. Am I misunderstanding the thread? I believe you work for a cloud provider in Sweden, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're a provider service uh, in Sweden. Yes, I did throw out the thread there into uh, the DevSec, um, the, the developers mailing group. Um, so I'm doing all I can. <laughs> talking yeah, to you guys about it. I, I think there's an opportunity um, at doing it the opposite direction rather than going from the top down, doing it from the ground up. That's, that sounds like a pretty good ongoing topic for an OpenStack user group. 
Yeah, but anyway, especially for Vagrant, I know that an OpenStack plugin exists and, and it works in some way. I had a presentation about that and, and we tried out and it was working, but anyway, it is not an officially HashiCorp supported plugin. That's, that's kind plugin. of the main issue, is that there's stuff that works, but again, there's a lot of other things. There's a whole tool suite and the integration between those various tools don't work that well because there's no like official plugin. So even though it kind of works, it's 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 not as seamless as, for example, if you're working with stuff on Amazon. Okay, so I think I misunderstood you originally then. So what you're saying is we need the foundation to reach out to HashiCorp and be like, hey man, let's do this thing. Okay, interesting. Um, I don't think that's impossible. I'm, I'm not immediately aware of who the right person at the foundation is, but in fact, it's probably Terry as like the engineering manager, but yeah, we can we can chase that. Indeed. And so this is an example where the ambassadors might connect people with the right people, exactly what you're supposed to be doing. So with about five minutes left in this panel, uh, I thought I'd throw it back over to the ambassadors. Uh, I think we've actually got a really good question up here in, in purple, uh, which is an ex existential question first. But I think the, the second part of that is what you hope to achieve in the community in the coming year. Uh, so any comments on that? I want to answer the first Tristan, bit of the question. Tristan hasn't spoken much. <laughs> Let him speak. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think um, for me, the, one of the cool things about being an ambassador is kind of a mentor for, for new user groups and, and community. So, um, and I'd, I'd like to keep doing that and like to sort of always like hitch myself to, to new groups around the place and, and help them get up, and up to speed. I mean, especially like yourself, um, you know, Martin can can mentor you and, and and obviously you know learn teach you much more quickly to get your user group running from experience. And, um, so that's that's a that's a big part of um, why I think the user groups exist. Uh, that sorry, the the ambassadors e exist as a as a sort of a um, a mentoring posse more than anything else. I, I just I I think I was kind of going to say the same thing to be honest. Like um. <laughs> I think it's an attempt to scale the user community organically, right? The foundation hypothetically could go and hire 100 people whose job it is to go and organise events that felt very commercial and shout at you and about how great OpenStack is. But successful user groups kind of pop up where they're needed by themselves and the ambassadors are about trying to support that instead of imposing, oh, you know, you, there's no user group in Wagga Wagga, we should fix that. <laughs> you know, maybe there's no demand there. But uh, so yeah, supporting people who are passionate is what this is about to me. Um, I think I think what what I've also noticed is the fact that uh, a lot of people feel isolated when they live away from the U.S. They don't they talk to the mailing list, they go to go on IRC, but it's not as good as personally meeting with some developers uh, in a meetup somewhere, having a few drinks, and you know just socializing and feeling generally included. Like they it it feels to them like, like what they do matters and user groups are a very good way of doing it. And as, as an ambassador, I make sure that if someone does come, come to me with a problem, I say, look, uh, thanks for bringing it up. I will definitely get someone to speak on it or someone to address that in the next meetup. And I try and make sure that uh, people feel included. That's uh, a brilliant, one. brilliant place to stop, actually. We've got about 60 seconds left in this. Uh, who wants to take it out? I, <laughs> I can dance, you you if you sing. <laughs> <laughs> um. Brilliant, well, with no comments left, apart from a couple on the etherpad, hopefully we can uh, sort out in this next 10 minute break between sessions. Please do come up after the session and introduce yourselves and we'll see how we can work together to help whatever it is you're doing. Let's please thank once again our OpenStack ambassadors. There is one last thing I think we should mention, <laughs> uh, the community mailing list. So if you have questions, um, you want to talk amongst each other, join the community mailing list, and, and uh, we monitor it as well. So it's a way to talk to the group. Excellent. Thank you very much.